This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. The bank account has class represents a bank account and has instance variables for the customer's name and starting balance. The basic account class represents a basic bank account. Interesting. Okay. The basic account class overrides the withdrawal method to charge $30 fee if a withdrawal causes an account to be overdrafted if the balance is negative. All right, let's check all of this out. So what are these terms here? Overrides. So let me go to bank account and we have a withdrawal method right here and we can see that the balance, okay, so we pass it an amount and the amount is removed from balance. Balance is the instance variable at the top accessible by the whole class and that amount is deducted. That would make sense. Basic account has a withdrawal. So this overrides. And again, guys, what does override mean? It means when we call it on a basic account object, it runs this, it runs this method. Now, if this didn't exist, for instance, it would still work running withdrawal because it is extended. This class is extended or a subclass of bank account. So if that method didn't exist, this method would run. Notice there's no overdraft issue here. So this is called overriding because when this does exist, that's the method that runs. It doesn't look at the superclass. All right. Now, when a bank account object is called directly, this runs. Okay, what do they want us to do? Write the get account info method to transverse move through the bank account array. Withdraw 300 from each account. Ooh, okay. So where do we do this? Get in. Here we go. Get accounts info. And we need to loop through our array. So there's two ways to do this. We could do a traditional or an enhanced for loop. I'll start with a traditional one. Now for what? Or an enhanced one? Bank account, right? So our bank account here is our array. How does this get assigned? How do I know this is populated? Well, when we make a bank, apparently, we have to pass to this constructor an array of accounts. What happens then? Well, this data type, this local accounts, this uh, variable is assigned right here. What is it assigned to? What does accounts get assigned to? It gets assigned to the class wide variable. That's what this means. It means this class, class wide variable accounts. So it can be accessed everywhere. Inside of this method, when we say just accounts like this, it means the parameter. When we say this, we're saying this class accounts, and that's how we can access it. So now I know what we're going to loop through, right, is a bank account. That's the data type here. And so I'm going to say bank account. And now what I can call this anything I want for my variable here. I'll just say, yeah, I'll just say account. And then what am I going to do? What list is accounts apparently? Oh, I don't like that because just an S different could be confusing. So I'm going to just do, I don't know, ACC for account, just because I don't like how it becomes less readable in that way. All right. Now for a traditional for loop, which is a million percent correct, I want to throw one down. Okay, so this would also be 100% correct. I declare a variable index. I say index must always be less than the length of my accounts. Whoops, that is this array. And index is going to be equal to index plus one each time, or this. And then how I would access everything here is just, right? So this is also a thousand percent correct. I like traditional loops, as my students know, and will roll their eyes. Enhance, though, here we are. And they want us to create an a string. So I'm going to just do result plus equals. And then what is it going to be equal to? What am I doing? I'm getting their name. So account or ACC how I did it, get name. Okay. And now I'm going to put in between this just so it's more readable a uh, colon, you can do anything you like if you would prefer a comma, there's no correct way to do this. It's just my way of doing it right now. Um, and then I'm going to do plus and I need ACC for account, get balance, apparently, bam, 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 bam. Now, these are all going to be mushed together right now, which I don't like. So I could do a few things. Maybe I want to do a comma or a semicolon between each of these. I think I'll stick with I'm going to do a new line character, totally up to you. Keep in mind with the comma, the last item in your list would still have a comma if you go that route. So all right, after it. Uh, that looks good to me. Now what are we doing? Okay, that's done. Create an account balance array. Okay. Containing bank accounts. All right, so my council. Oh, right here. Cool. 
So bank account is the data type and it's an array. So I got to do square brackets and bank accounts, I'll call this, and then equals, and I'll populate it immediately using curly brackets. That looks good. And now I need to instantiate a bank account with the bank accounts array. Oh no, a bank object. Yep, so we pass the constructor and I'll just call this my bank. Yeah, I got a bank. I was never allowed to be the banker in uh, Monopoly because they cheated. And my sisters thought they were better at math than me, or at least that's what they said, but they weren't. I'm really good at math. But anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Monopoly. No, banks. Uh, all right. Okay, that looks good. And now call the get info method and return. Okay, so I'm just going to print this out. System.out.print or println, kind of up to you. And then moment of truth. Do I need to do bug or has it worked? Bam, it worked. And so what's going on here? Well, we pass it this array of bank accounts. Okay, now notice there is basic and standard bank accounts here, but it doesn't matter because they're all inheriting or they're all part of the bank account. So the hierarchy means this bank account class, the bank, the basic account is extended from or is a subclass of bank account, which is why I can make a bank account array and include both basic account objects and bank account objects. And then I can use this method. Uh, wait a minute. And then I create the bank, I pass to the bank an array of bank accounts, right? Even though some are basic accounts, this is fine. And then what do we do? We iterate, we loop through all of the data, and we append it to this string. And then I return it. Once I return it, I smack it out by printing it to the console. Pretty cool. Onward.